Well, hello and uh, welcome to our Ontario network of CAPC and PNP <laughs> projects, um, Indigenous Teachings Learning Circle. And um, my name is Sydney. I'm the program lead for our network. And I'm really just delighted to be here uh, once again with Vera and Sheila and uh, our friend uh, Lurlene uh, from Aurelia Native Women's uh, uh, center is also here and we've got some some folks here <laughs> us. and um, uh, before we begin I want to acknowledge that um, well first of all uh, the land that the organization where I work for in Ontario um, in the city of Kitchener uh, is on the traditional lands of the Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee and neutral peoples and uh, I'm actually calling in from uh, myself from British Columbia, the Okanagan Valley, which is the um, uh, the traditional and unceded land of the uh, of the Okanagan Silks people. So I want to offer that acknowledgement and gratitude. And um, I have with me a tobacco offering uh, for our elder and um, doing sort of a a, a virtual pass off uh, to you. Uh, Vera here in um, an acknowledgement of of gratitude for your time and uh, and Sheila as well so grateful to have you here with us and um, today's topics at least it was parent self-care uh, and just always glad to hear whatever teachings you uh, are looking to to offer us so hello Vera, hello, Sheila. Nice to see you. <laughs> okay, before we go any further, mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to say a prayer. Uh, and you can watch me because I'm watching you and all outside is all of nature, the water and everything that's there. Uh Queen Alo Ano Mawa Ni Alongo Matid Ni Da Jin Zi Ni Ha Lanapel Nunja Ayahi O Shikalamoke Anishik 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 for allowing us to be part of your creation this day. Oh, Shikalamoke, Anishik, Anishik, for your guidance, direction, and your energy that you provided for us for this day. Oh, Shikalamoke, Anishik, Anishik, for the guidance, direction, and energy for all of us that come from the eastern doorway, the southern doorway, the western doorway, the northern doorway, so that we can fulfill our journey in a good way. Minabamadzuan, learning to live this good life. Oh, she kalamoke, anishik, anishik, anishik. Oh. Mm. Miigwech. Miigwech. Thank you. Mm. Mm -hmm. Now we're we're talking about uh, the care that I take for myself, and uh, that's one of them. Um, is the power, it doesn't mean, it means to me, wherever you are, God, as you understand, whatever church, uh, all of nature is wide open. It belongs to all of us. And as long as we ask humbly for that guidance and direction and energy, that is there for us. We breathe it in because with all, without that uh, 
nature and the water and Madewabo, sacred water. Without uh, um, all of nature, we would not survive. We would not be here. That's what I need to do to take care of myself. That's what I need to do is to make sure that if I do it, you know, I'm telling you the truth. Um, I don't want to prove to you or anybody else of who I am, but it's very important that my children, my grandchildren, and my great-grandchildren know how this grandma lives. They've been here. They've been and they run this, run through this home like it, they owned it, and which they do respectfully. They don't uh, wreck anything and they don't dig in anything. They have their toys. They um, plant the garden that's growing out there. They feed the birds, fill up my bird feeders full of uh, um, sunflower seeds, all the way down to the water. It's important because I want them to learn that if you're going to do something, you have to plant that seed. Now, they've been doing this for a pole sugar foot since they were little. But I did it before, always had, always had a little garden of some kind. I grew up that way because I come from a family that's uh, seven girls and six boys. And I, I come from a family that had uh, uh, just uh, coal oil lamps. Um, Outside uh, toilets, there was no, there was no fancy um, way that I could explain to you that uh, um, But if you ask your uh, grandmothers, ask them about uh, what it was like. Only, only then you will have some idea because that same uh, way of life is coming back, whether we want it to or not. We've got to learn what's out there. I love this, uh, the way that uh, Sheila's learning. She has a teacher for the medicines, uh, everything that's out there and how to put it together. And I use it. I use it every morning. I use it in, if I need it in the afternoon before I go out and do anything. I got to make sure that I have that medicine. I also get medicine from the medicine lady that she in it. That she's such a powerful lady. Uh, but you know, as a parent, we get this feeling of, uh, of a, it, it feels so good that you're here. It feels like uh, um, there's such a good uh, um, uh, it's a, it's a as if you can just touch it and you know that uh, it's there and you, you uh, um, and when you get that feeling, it just, it, it just comes in here and you think, oh, wow, this is, this is a safe place or this, this person, oh, she's for real or he's for real. I know that, but if, and 
lot of people feel like that when they go into, when I go into somebody's house and uh, where I got a, I get that feeling right away. Uh oh, so I got to sit like this. Or if I go into somebody's house and and you get that nice feeling, well, you can really sit down and cross your legs and and feel good about it. As parents, we need to do that. I need to acknowledge my feelings. I need to tell you that you have them. Everybody has them. And because you question somebody does not mean I ignore them because I don't. Um, I'm a good listener. If you have your own story, I'll listen to you. Um, if I disagree with your story, I'll tell you I, I don't understand it, but this is your life. You don't have to understand mine here, but I'm telling you the truth about who I am, what I do, and why it's so important. From the beginning of my mother to this mother, to, from the grandmother, oh, the old grandmothers were beautiful. They spoke the language, they never spoke English. How in heaven's name, uh, uh, which is sad because of the schools that came in and uh, we had to learn English first. It was the most important one. And it, it's not a bad thing. It's the understanding that we had because that was all there was. Um, we had to learn it. Now I just know bits and pieces of uh, uh, Lini Lanapal language. I know more of the Ojibwe language. I can say who I am and all this. Uh, but in honor of this is Ojibwe country. This is where my children and grandchildren, I need to acknowledge that. That's very important. You have, I have an agenda that's so huge, parent. It's so big, no different when we tie that ribbon, a yellow ribbon. It's so huge, so big. That's exactly what we have. But we're, we're, we are, um, I want to say, I guess, I, you know, I think about it in uh, English. We are the most powerful role models for our family. We are the most powerful, powerful roadmap map for our, my children. I, I, I believe that with all my heart. Nobody will ever change my mind. I'm not trying to change your mind. I just want to let you know that whether you like it or not, you are the role model for your family, for all of your children, even your sisters, your brothers, your nieces, your, your community members. They know who you are. They know what you do. I don't know, it doesn't make any difference if you live in a white world, red world, or yellow or, or um, black world. They know. There's always, always a little um, circle. Um, um, I like to refer to, like, uh, I love the word ceremony because when we're with our families, with our friends, 
it is a very sacred ceremony because we take time to acknowledge them. We take time to sit and have a cup of tea with them and laugh and uh, discuss our families. When I get with my sister, Laureline's mom, we don't talk about you. It doesn't matter. Our families, have you heard from my brother? He's, I got two brothers older than me. Have you heard from them? No. Have you heard from anybody that let us know? Yes, she hears from Robin. Yes, she's seen Uncle Don was there. Oh, good, that's my brother. Um, Terrence, uh, um, I worry about them. I wonder, my other sister, uh, so I haven't seen one for, good Lord, 12, 13 years. And the other one since the pandemic, three years on a phone, but the phone is not the same. A phone is not, uh, I think phones are the worst darn things in the world. Um, because if you want to talk to me, I tell them, my door, my door is open there. You don't need uh, a special invitation. This one lady, this this just happened today with Diane. And uh, I says, Tina's getting married. Oh, I got to tell Laureline, I got to tell your mom, we've got a plant here. They don't know this, but I didn't know this either. And she says, we are not invited. Oh, my good gravy. Who do you think you are that you have to have a special invitation to come to her wedding? Well, we're crash it, then crash it. But if your family or close to uh, family, you don't even have to be family when I think about the people that, yeah, she's getting married. September the 24th, put that on your book. If you get here, good. If you don't, that's okay too. But that's a special day. So you need to make sure that uh, what you do, um, you let them know they don't need an invite from you to come and be part of your family or ceremony or, or um, circle or, uh, mm, I always say, it's open to everybody. Even the little ones. The little ones, they can take so much in from you, me, and everybody else. They just seem to have a um, space. And yet, too, I know, I remember. I can remember when my dad came from the Second World overseas. I can remember things. I can remember things that I want to remember because it was rough, but I still remember them. And I still talk about them because that's the way it is. And if we discuss it with our families, it gets easier and easier to look at. If we want to keep a secret, and we hide it in ourselves, that's very painful because I've done that too. When I, my dad was really pretty sick from the army and I was afraid, I was ashamed, I was mad, I was angry, growing up as a child. And then somewhere along the line, um, talk about it and knowing how bad it was because you see that all the time they always say um they're having a disagreement or they're having a they don't call it war they've been fighting ever since fighting all the time even in uh uh, cities, even here, like at home, when uh, 
uh, families disagree. Um, there's there's a a fight there that should never happen, but it's there. And to acknowledge it is good. You know, there's not the matter, I tell Sheila. Well, I know they don't like me, and they don't have to. And you'll be surprised. I don't like you them either. <laughs> I disagree with them. But it doesn't mean uh, I hate them or I'll walk across the street or whatever. I will acknowledge them and get on my way. And as parents, we need to do that. You don't have to like me. Just say, you know, uh, Ani or hi or uh, mine is on my phone, bonjour. Uh, and I say bonjour because it's in honor of uh, the one that first came here, Nipponana bonjour. Mm -hmm. And that's where that come from. And when they were leaving today, this morning, when uh, Gills went back to Montreal, goodbye. I said, you don't say that. Well, what do you say? You say, ba ma pi mi ma guag. Just say, ba ma pi. What does it mean? Till we meet again. Then there, there's no end. A, a goodbye is like, chung, that's it. No, 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 no. Um, like I said, and remember, you are the role model for your family. I am. I am the role model here at Cape, at Moravian Town, at Walpool. Um, I got relatives all over. I don't know them, but when I go through and they call me auntie or they say are you one of the white eye girls and I'll laugh and I'll say yes I knew it I knew it <laughs> and you know that's it makes it makes you just feel good so when you're being acknowledged you know it makes you feel good and you need to do that because if you do that when your children are acknowledged they will be so happy. They will know. And it doesn't mean things are going to be hunky-dory. I have a son that I could choke uh, because of addictions. But that's not my life. He knows who I am. And through respect, he does not, I haven't seen him. And I call that respect because I don't want him here when all my other grand and great grandchildren are here. They don't need to see that. They don't see that with their mother and dad. So they don't need to see that with anybody else. And to the other one that I think really uh, bothers me and I get on their case, even Laureline's. Your mouth, your language is horrible. Light my medicine. And when it's out and I leave, I use the words that should never be. Now, I didn't uh, do that. I did the opposite, but Jermaine's, I seen Jermaine on TV too, <laughs> dancing for uh, Aboriginal Day uh, on APTN. She, it was beautiful. And, uh, and she even spoke. And I was telling, that's Jermaine. Hmm? But her mother in law, Winona, the grandmothers before, that taught me and told me what I needed to know. I didn't like it, but I listened. And I'm grateful because my little uh, great grandkids don't uh, talk.
talk like that yet. And uh, hopefully we can correct them in a good way. Not by punishment, but uh, just explaining the way things are and it's it's not a good thing. And it isn't a good thing. You know, the, uh, doing, you know, when I'm talking to you, or make no difference, Lamuda. It's so important that um, the greatest feeling, no matter what's happening here, ceremonies, no matter who it is. They said they need a grandmother and they come and get me. Oh gosh, just give me it. Give me an hour, pick me up an hour. Because I can't just throw something. I gotta, I gotta jump in the shower or put on, find my long dress and make sure that I walk out there showing them who I am. And it's either Sheila or Tina. Get my chair, my cushion, my blanket. Sheila made me a blanket coat. Oh, the things that, uh, and everything that is so perfect in my life. Um, it really is. Because when I look around and see people or... Uh, like it, it's um, the respect that you gain by being a role model the best you can. You can't buy that. There isn't a price you can put on. Uh, parents uh, role modeling. There, there just isn't. There's a um, you know, there's uh, so many stories, um, and they're true stories, but they're such beautiful stories, too. Um, when they're little and they, you feed uh, little chipmunks and they crawl up to your hand and you know, they'll eat. Even, even that gills who we are sitting there and uh, chipmunks. And he has a cup. A chipmunk will come up and take one out of the cup. And it goes up his neck and around. And he jumped over to the chair I was sitting. And he went up and around. Oh! <laughs> and down and back up again. And he went to that cup again. But even out here, when uh, my great grandkids are, the chickadees still sing, you know, go around. And here's Noden. He's now, uh, how old is Noden? 14, 15? Mm -hmm. He's 15. I think he's 15. And uh, he was out. This is when he was in he was first year high school. And he was on the honor roll, too. Um, held out his hand to put up. Feed the bird. And that 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 little chickadee come right up. <gasps> he couldn't believe it. But that's exactly what happens. Your children, your neighbors, your friends, your family will see you just like that. You're so precious. After when I sit here, I'm glad when they're gone home because I'm really tired. And I sit here and I sit on a chair and I think, oh, and I say a prayer. I'm so grateful. Oh, I get, I like to get in the cedar and boiling it on a stove. Let it go through, rinse my hair, wash my face because it's so good. And that's the blessings from all of creation. Now, I want Sheila to tell you about being that grandmother. 
Bonjourni. Shkure kwendish the cause, makwado dam. So, the bendamag shamna do, minwa, the bendamag shkukmakwe. Self care. Well, you know, we have to look after ourselves to look after our children. And, um, and you know, there's so many life teachings and, and um, so many things that we have to do, you know, to get to that place, to be a grandma and to look after your grandchildren. And uh, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of commitment. And I guess, so for me, you know, that self-care, I had to choose and decide, you know, to put down the alcohol and the drugs you know, for my children. And, um, you know, so, and because we have free will, and I didn't learn about this till later on. I, you know, I have free will, we all have free will, and we get to choose and decide what our life is going to look like, and how we're going to live our lives. You know, and, um, and thank God, you know, my Kyle, he doesn't remember me being under the influence of mood altering chemicals. He doesn't remember that. He was three. So he was two when I quit and changed my life. And um, so he don't really remember. And he chose for himself, you know, that he did not want, he heard all the stories because I never, I never kept nothing from my kids. I made sure they, they knew the truth, you know, about my addiction and their dad's addiction and, you know, in the toxic environment that they were raised in, you know, alcoholism and drugs and, you know, abuse, domestic violence, all of it. And so when I, when I straightened myself out and I got custody of my kids, I had to clean myself up I had to reach out for help and get lots and lots of help and so and that included going to you know um, um, medicine people and counseling professional counseling so we're really fortunate and blessed at that time to have um, a Nishnabe um, counselor and um, that helped me with my family. And he, he come to our community and he, go, he went to Soggy and to all the, the um, reservations he went to, to go and help his people. And so, and then of course there's other programs like the healing circles and, you know, women's circles and drum circles and so, you know, you, and you just pick this all up in the grandmother's full moon ceremonies and, you know, so like there's lots and lots of things that we can attend to get help, to help ourselves. And so in order for me to, you know, to teach my kids a better way of living, a better way of life, you know, I had to do that for myself and change, you know, I had to change those ways and um and accept that that's a part of my life path okay change my attitude change my you know my um my thought patterns and uh, my attitudes and my world views so i had a lot of healing to do you know i went to quantum healing and um and that's self-care you know, it's no different from when you go, when you wake up in the morning and you go and wash your face in the morning and brush your teeth and comb your hair and clean yourself up. That's self-care. I had more extensive self-care to change my life so that I would be a good grandma when, whenever my grandchildren came and then poof, my kids surprised me with a grand, you know, my grandson. And, um, so, you know, and, and we're very connected. And uh, so I want my grandson to know that way. And so yesterday, I, I'm going to share this because this is, uh, this is really important. And that is that, um, um, that connection to the earth, 
and how important that is for everyone. And it doesn't matter what race you are, where you come from. It doesn't matter, you know, if, if you're two-spirit or not. It don't matter. We all, every single human being has that connection to the earth. And uh, we just forget when we're growing up, eh? So my, my grandson was really upset last night. We had um, a concert at our, our park and he's not really the kind of person that likes to, he's not really been exposed to loudness. And um, so before, you know, when he was about a couple weeks old, I told my Alex and my Kyle that um, I said, Alex, when Kyle was a baby, he kept me a prisoner at home. And it was because it hurt his ears, all the loudness. So if it was too loud, you know, those monster trucks and those concerts, too loud. You know, we couldn't go to Sabo Beach for the um, races, the car races, because it was too loud. It hurt his ears. And he would always go like this, my ears, right? His ears were very sensitive. And um, so I stayed home lots with my Kyle. And uh, we never went anywhere. And I sacrificed that, you know, that that's a sacrifice when we do these things for our kids, right? And, uh, and I was okay with it. He was a good baby, my son. So I told my Alex that I said, you know, you know, maybe I could day when, you know, you never know, he might be the same way. Well, last night when we went to the concert, he flipped right out. He did not want to be there. It was too loud. Kyle had to cover his ears. He was screaming and crying. So I picked him up and I walked away with him. And I took him to our, our uh, fire pit arbor where we have our, our fire pit, the arbor in the park there when we have our powwows. Now, there wasn't a sacred fire there or anything, but I just went and sat and it was quiet there. And so what did he do? He was looking at the bush and the winds were really high and the leaves were flipping and turning and they were rustling and making that noise. If you listen to the winds, you can hear the trees say eh? they're, they're making their, their noises with their leaves and that, you know, and messages are being passed. And so he stopped, he stopped, you know, crying and he looked up. So the winds caught his attention and he was looking at the trees and then he kind of looked at me, he turned his head, he looked at me and he smiled. And then he looked at the trees again and uh, he was just fascinated with the winds and the light and the shimmering, the sun, how the sun shone. He was really focused on that. That's what I noticed about him. And then there was this little bird that was singing in the apple tree. And so he turns his head and he's looking and then he tilts his head like this and he's trying to look. Where's that sound coming from? He's looking. So he's hearing all the sounds of nature and he's hearing the sounds of the elements. And he's totally not even focused on that concert and the guitar and the singing and stuff that's happening on the stage. He's just He's just right in his element and he settled right down real fast. And I told him, I said, you're okay now. And he looked at me, he started smiling and jumping again. He was back to himself. So we went and sat under the apple tree. I said, we'll stay here. We don't have to go over there. It's too loud. I know. And so he sat down there and his mom and dad was walking all over trying to look for grandma and her son couldn't find us. Finally, they come around there you are sitting under the apple tree. And I said, well, he's happy. He said, he looks much happier, mom. Thank you. And I said, I looked at Alex. I said, get prepared. Maybe you might have to stay home and spend time and he's going to teach you something, right? And um, I said, you know what? Lucky for you, you have lots of grandmas that will help you so you can get stuff done. So then I told them last night, I said, the, you know, he, he's been missing me because I've been just visiting, visiting and working my butt off, you know, and, and helping as much as I can in our community. 
that he needed to spend time with me. So I said, drop him off. So he come and spent the night with me last night. And I give him a bath and he loves his bath. And he was laughing. Didn't take long for him to, you know, give him a bottle. And away he went to bed. He was out like a light. So, you know, and that and that that's a really beautiful story. And a lot of our, our people don't have that story. They don't have that. And, and a lot of cultures, they don't have that, that kind of story, but that talks about that connection, you know, to those trees, that Tikanabe, that connection to that wind, that Nodin, that Chinodin, you know, and our, our Gizas, that grandfather, son, you know, and that Baneshi, those singers, those birds that sing and make music. Well, there's more than just birds out there that sing. There's all kinds of animals that make noise and sing, right? And so, so part of our self-care, you know, and that's grounding ourselves. You know, there's grounding in there as well. Because when we're not grounded and our energy is all over the place, you know, then uh, there's not going to be any settling. And that's what I chalked it up to. All the energies that were there was too much for him. And babies are very sensitive. You know, our people are gifted and they're very sensitive. And sometimes the energy can be just so big that, you know, we have to get them out of there and just help them to find their own again. And so, you know, so, so self-care is so, so very important right? Because we teach, we teach everyone. And just by how we carry ourselves, you know, and the things that we do for ourselves, and people look at you, and they can tell right away, if you're not looking after yourself, you know, and uh, they get really surprised when they see me in my slobby clothes. Well, sometimes I like my saggy old jogging pants and ripped up holy old t shirts, because it's comfortable. But the perception that people has is that, oh, geez, you're depressed or you're angry or whatever. I'm like, I never said I was depressed. I never said I was angry. You know, you make all these assumptions. I'm actually really happy inside and I feel really comfortable in these clothes, right? And, uh, and you can teach you, we can teach so many people about that, because that alone right there is self care, right? Because we're not trying to, we're not dressing to impress, you know, we don't have to put on our professional clothes like these today, I decided these are my zoom clothes, you know, and, um, and my hair is in a bun. See, I, I I'm going to show you what I did. This is my self-care. I like my buns in the summer because I have hot flashes, right? It gets too hot. I can't have my hair down no more. I cut a hole in the top of my hat for my bun. That's what I did. And then today, because I Sundance, this is my Sundance crown, right? So, and, it, and uh, the last Sundance that I did, I got to keep my crown. So I kept it. And I put it on my hat and to remind myself, I'm not the only one in the world here that lives on Turtle Island. I got my little button. So I have reminders for myself all the time. And so I just go like that, put my little bun in my hole on my hat, set it in place and nobody ever knows. They think it's a part of the whole attire, right? So, I mean, we gotta be creative, right? And then they see that, you know, and then you get people that, oh, you have to match. You got to match, right? You know, society has all of these, you know, different ways for us to be as, as women, as Anishinaabe Kwe, right? Society says you have to present yourself this way and you have to match, so if you look at all the commercials, all those models that they have there, they all match. Well, I'm telling you, you don't have to match. I got lime green on. I've got my purple favorite, you know, spaghetti strap top, my hat and red. Look, I've got all different colors. And I don't even care. 
I'm comfortable. I like it. It works for me. You know, it don't matter. I don't care what anybody thinks. This is me being me. And if more of us treated ourselves as me being me, can you imagine how beautiful our world would be, right? Sitting out there under the sun, under the trees, holding our grandchildren, listening to the wind, sitting by the water, dip their feet in the water, right? Self-care. So, so it goes from generation to generation and it's like that ripple effect, right? So when you toss a stone in the water and you see those little rings, you know, you start off with a small ring, the splash, the small ring, and then it just starts to spread out and it just gets bigger. That's a vibration. We can raise our own vibrations by being who we are, right? And helping each other, helping all the women in the world, you know, and teaching self-care right? And in those times, you know, when we aren't feeling okay, when we're, you know, we're, we're really tired, you know, we have to decide for ourselves to take a rest, take five minutes, have that rest, know yourself, get to know yourself. When you're going for a walk, listen to your breathing, right? Get to know your body, you know, my grandson, he went to bed so early at 930, he woke up at 130 in the morning and had to have a half a bottle. So I, I made him a little bite and he just went right back to sleep. His poor little belly was just grumbling away. And he was so tired because he was outside all day, right? So if you wake up at 130 in the morning and you're hungry, go get go have yourself a snack, right? Lay down, go back to sleep. There's healthy snacks that we can have. You know, there's, there's, there's all kinds of things. You know, our babies teach us stuff. Our, our kids, our children teach us stuff, right? And when we sit around with our elders, our grannies, you know, we're learning to be those grandmothers because they also teach us stuff, right? They teach us how to be. They tell us about their life stories, you know, and we can learn if we listen, we have to listen to what they're saying, because there's teachings in everything that they say. I don't even talk. I don't even talk. When I hung out with the grandmas, I never even talked. I just laughed and listened. And I learned so much about each of them. And I still do that to, today. I do that today still, you know, I'll sit down and listen and Whatever they have to share, they teach me something, eh? And so, you know, so we can learn from each other because self-care, you know, is so important, especially in today's society with all these sicknesses and, you know, and stuff like that. We want to protect and whatever. But if we believe in ourselves and we take care of our spirits and we take care of our bodies, use our medicines, you know, from the earth. I mean, the simplest medicine is cedar tea. And I know out West, that's really hard to find, but there's all kinds of roots and other teas out there that grow, right? And they say, you know, uh, use the medicines in your area, right? That's going to help you. And if you don't know the medicines for your area, find someone, go talk to an elder because they know, they know, you just have to, like she like Nokum has said take time go knock on that door can I come for a visit can I have a visit with you you know they might offer you a tea and they might say you'll have to come back another day you'll have to be determined that doesn't mean they're trying to hurt your feelings because that's not what they're doing it means they've got something else planned in their day you know I had to call a grandma several times when she she wanted to teach me her medicine that in her in the family her family and uh she she told me to call her in two days I called her in two days if I couldn't reach her I called 10 times a day until I got a hold of her because she said call me in two days so I'm going to call because I want to know I want to know I was determined 
when she said, can you come and pick me up in, in an hour? I said, I'm on my way. I'll be there in an hour. And we went out and we walked around and we looked. She told me where to go mm -hmm. to help me, to teach me, you know, and that's free will, that's self-care. Mm -hmm. And that's determination to, to learn these ways, right? You know, because there's going to be somebody in our lives that's going to show up. And this is what they said. That's going to need your help. So you learn everything that you can. I learned everything that I could from her. You know, when she was here on this earth. And, um, and I still think of her every time I go out and pick that medicine at that time of year. I think of her all the time and I say, miigwech, miigwech for helping me, no come and say, and talk to her spirit, right? It's so important, you know, so important to, to know those things and to do those things, you know, for yourself, that is self-care, right? And, um, and taking the time, because in today's society, we always say, oh, I don't got time for that. There's no time for me. So for someone like me, there's not enough time in the day to get everything done. I want to get done, right? While I still can, because we have grandmas who say they have difficulties now. Well, now we, it's up to us to do that work for them. We have to help them with that, whatever they need, right? It's our jobs as, as skinny quad to get out there. I'm, I'm still a skinny quad. I'm not old by any means. <laughs> Mind you, I did get a senior's card from Madoki. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm a senior at Madoki now. <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah. And um, so anyways, um, yeah. So, you know, that's, uh, it, it's, we're really blessed to come in these forms that we chose, right? We're really blessed. And our young people, you know, our, our future generations, you know, and we have to teach them that, you know, we have to show them. So learn everything that you can, right? Do your self-care, look at yourselves, you know, tell yourself in the mirror in the morning, I love you. Feel that love love yourself care about yourself be mm -hmm. kind to yourself right sometimes we get those little stories going on you know that i think of those little uh, xylophones is that what they're called a great big horn thing that you know um or even a blow horn you know i think of those big horns and those little stories that tell us we're not good enough well that's not true stay out of here and, and go sit on the earth and connect to the earth, right? Sit on our mother. Go put your feet in the water. You know, feel that water on your toes. Wiggle your toes around, you know, in that water. Feel the sand, feel the stones. Even just touching the grass. Put That's your crazy. toes on that, on that grass, right? On that lawn, that earth. Dig a hole with your feet. And put your feet inside the earth and feel it on your toes, right? That will take you out of the stories being made up in your head. That will help you. Hug a tree. Be a tree hugger. People make fun of tree huggers. And I'm, you know, I hug trees all the time. You know, my favorite tree is that tree of life. You know, that's a mm -hmm. ceremony. And I'm going to be going there next. I'll be going to ceremony and hugging that beautiful tree of life mm -hmm. to help me, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. Our mother earth has so much to offer us. Creator has blessed us, you know, with all of this, this beautiful way of life with all of these teachings. And um, so, you know, as moms and sometimes we're dads, right? Sometimes we have to be dad. If dad's off working or, or traveling or, or if dad just decided his own free will to walk away from the family, right? You know, or maybe dad had an accident and, and passed away when we were young or something, right? You know, mm -hmm. sometimes we have to, to help with that role and find uncles, mm -hmm. right? Healthy, mm -hmm. healthy uncles. Ask them, what do you do? 
you know, to help our little boys, right, to be a, a role models, right? And, um, and um, yeah, so that's important too. So we can teach both our, our daughters and our, our sons and our grandsons and our nieces and our nephews, right? And um, yeah, so, so it's so beautiful. I'm so grateful because this year, for the first time ever, my dad, on Father's Day, I texted my dad and I always say, Happy Father's Day, Daddy. You know, and I text them on Mother's Day and I say, Happy Mother's Day, Daddy. And uh, so this year, he, he texted me back, Happy Father's Day to you too. I love you. And my son texted me and he said, Happy Father's Day, Mom. I love you. You know, so we have to do those acknowledgements too. That's really important because it's a huge role, you know, carrying, carrying life around inside your belly for nine months, right? And sometimes dad's not at the hospital to help with the baby come out, right? Sometimes we don't have relatives. And especially during that COVID time, you know, you were lucky if you, if dad was allowed to go in right? And that's really difficult because we're emotional. We're emotional beings, us women, you know, and we're very sensitive beings. We're very sensitive, you know? And um, so, yeah, you know, self-care, it's really important. You know, my husband, I tell my husband, and this used to freak him right out. My, my husband I'm married to now, not my ex-husband. I didn't have nothing nice to say to him. That's the truth. But um, my husband today, I would tell him, you know, I'd say, no, you go out with your man friends, go have man time. Really what I was telling him was get out of my hair, right? Go have fun with your, go, you know, your friend, your man friend needs company. He needs an ear to listen. Go do that, do that. And he just looked at me and he was shocked, you know, he was like, yeah, you're okay with that. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, he needs you go, 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 go. It's okay. It's all good. You know, and uh, I just got to this place of acceptance and, you know, because men need friends too, right? They need their man friends healthy, you know, as long as you're going out for coffee and not going out getting drunk or stoned or whatever, right? you know, then you tell me what you're doing. It's all good, right? It's good, you know? And, um, and so Eckhart Tolle, here's a really good one. Eckhart Tolle used to say, was it Eckhart Tolle or Wayne Dyer? One of those spiritual leaders used to say, enjoy in yourself, right? Enjoy. What does that mean to you? Enjoy in yourself. Okay. Spend time with yourself. Get to know yourself. Feel those feelings. Journal. Journals are really good, right? See what you like, what you don't like. Rediscover yourself. Maybe you love to paint and you don't even know it. I painted a picture and I didn't even know I could paint, you know? And, and I needed some help with it, but I liked it. I did a good job. I can't draw. I like my stick men, right? I'm circles and straight lines for my people and stuff. I actually drew an eye and I could draw a head and a face like a, like, like a human, right? And make it look human so I, I can draw, right? You know, um, I got myself um, um, one of those... Um, what do you call those things? Uh, those wood burning tools. Hey, wood burning. And how I found out that I could do wood burning was Uncle Wilmer bought at Chimosa. I had no choice but to burn people's names and feathers and stuff that he carved. And I was like, oh, my God, you really want to trust me with that thing? You know, I don't know if I could do that. Right. What if I make a mistake? And he talked to me, right? He talked me through it. He said, you just look at it and you see their name. And then you just breathe and do it. Just do it. Just do it. And I did it. 
So I actually went out and bought myself one of those. And I did that for one of my stems. You know, I had to make a stem for a wagon. I, I did that, right? So, you know, and, you know, us women were very amazing creatures, I think. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm calling us all creatures. You're thinking about that. Uh, we're amazing creatures. We're beautiful, beautiful creatures on this earth, right? And, um, and some of us are gifted in doing, you know, men's work even, you know, construction. Maybe some of us like construction. I know how to um, um, shingle a roof. I know how to do that because I learned and I actually liked it. It was pretty good. Mind you, I'm a kind of a perfectionist. So if the line wasn't allowed to be a little bit off. It had to be right on, <laughs> you know, so there's there's all kinds of stuff. We can be Jack, Jill of all trades, I'll say, right? We can do all of those things. I'm not a knitter, but I learned to knit. I thought- you know that yeah go ahead yeah Bernie. we did we did a self-care actually with our our moms and um with just uh foot soak us uh, and uh even a cedar soak yes put our cedar soak you know just sitting there and um i actually did it too and you know just doing that cedar soak um just relax and, and just having that, you know, little bit of quietness. And I, you know, I'll, everyone enjoyed it. And sure. we're going to actually do it again, you know? Nice. Yeah, because, you know, a, a lot of our moms, even like you said, we're so busy. We don't think we have time, you know, to... Um, do something for ourselves you know we're always worrying like myself i'm always worried about everyone else and we kind of sometimes forget about ourselves i kind of lost my voice we had indigenous day yesterday we did a barbecue down at the park so we had door prizes <laughs> i think i lost my voice from you know yelling the numbers and it was so warm too right eh? this morning i woke up and i'm trying to talk and i'm like Oh my gosh, I think I lost my voice, you know. <laughs> this yelling yesterday. It was so it was so beautiful yesterday at an indigenous day. So yeah, but definitely, you know, I like to um for our moms more, like taking care of themselves, you know, taking um not to say better care, but just um because a lot of them are so busy, new moms. Uh, they have many kids and I guess we forget about ourselves, eh? We're all too worried about everyone else. So I'm always reminding them also, don't forget yourself, you know? You need to look after yourself. In order to continue looking after these little ones, we do have to take care of ourselves. Yeah. That's so I think that that's that's exactly what what you said that's what happens okay. sometimes uh too we can't face what our lives are so we do these to make up and as long as we keep busy and i honestly say this because yeah. i did it mm -hmm. i had my children uh, i lived by myself uh, i didn't have a relationship and I worked in addictions and it was day and night, day and night. Mm -hmm. And I really believe, and I didn't know this until I was told that the energy, how it came from uh, mm -hmm. the creator and helping me to come through this. But because I was um, alone and I, I, that part of me. So as long as I worked hard over and over and over again, I was so beat that when I finally got home, I could go to sleep. Mm -hmm. And that's something we have to watch out for. Mm -hmm. But I think the most important thing, this is a story I need to tell you. This, now this is for all nations. Mm -hmm. This is not the red 
people teachings was given to every nation mm -hmm. what you did with it go back in your history and find out it's still there mm -hmm. it is still there for you to pick it up on this past four days gills uh, uh <laughs> i had fun i really did then uh because uh Here's uh, Diane, she's French from Montreal. And she wanted, she liked how I said we would have our little morning gratefulness with uh, um, our medicine, which Gil looked after, just like this, no different. It was no big deal, but she liked it so much. But I learned way back when, for Wilmer's wife, his real wife, uh, Lucy, um, to go, she quit. Mm. means French lady. Mm. So I was telling her, you know what you are? You're um, to go, she quit. What is that? A French lady. Are you proud of it? Yes. Then say it. Um, to go, she quit. Mm. And here she goes. Um, to go. I just think of um, U M P, an um. I had more fun <laughs> with her. Um, to go, she quit in Dow. I'm like, she, <laughs> and she says, Really? Are you proud of who you are? Yes. Then say it like you mean it. And she was uh, saying it loud, Um, to go, she quit in Dow. <laughs> I said, that's not being proud. You're trying to convince me. Yeah. <laughs> okay, slow down, slow down. So this morning before they left, we did the same thing that uh, told Gil light it. Okay, tell me who you are. So she went through her name and everything. I'm to go with you quit now. Just beautiful, just beautiful. And, and, uh, uh, learning to live the good life mm. learning to live the good life that is for all of us and to for every man woman and child uh, have a name the, the creation uh, story is not just for us you have a special name that the creator has given you, no matter what color you are. And if you don't know it, ask, ask old grandma, what is my name? I'd like to have a name. Um, and that's so important because I look at my great grandkids here and I named them. Uh, same way with uh, what's your face? Uh, Laurely and uh, your sister, I mean, your daughter. Sierra. Yeah. Uh, Wingush. Yeah. Yes. Wingush. Yeah. <laughs> Which means sweet grass lady. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's because she was the way, well, there's a teaching behind that. Uh, I remember her. Her dad was in bad shape and she was all of her strength she took to bring him in to the community center. Everybody looked and looked sad and looked everything. But I thought, oh my God, girl, you're just beautiful. She took her dad mm -hmm. so pitifully mm -hmm. and brought him in, sat beside him. Mm -hmm. That was, and the, the, and when you light the um, sweet grass, that shows the kindness. That's the kindness that that sweet a comes and gives us. Um, there's such beautiful teachings behind. Every one of those, uh, whatever is out there, 
Look for it, and I'm sure too, on your magic machines. Look at it. A lot of them are there. And there's no such thing as wrong or right. Um, it, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's just amazing when, uh, uh, I know when I got my name, I had my name for so long. But yet, uh, when I went over to uh, uh, Oklahoma to learn about Lenny Lanapal people, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, the history that I learned where, and I said, well, no wonder Tecumseh was over there War of 1812. I could finally put stuff together. And it, it's just, um, that's part of uh, the role model too, that the parent has. Um, and sometimes it takes uh, time on your own to find out, but I, I don't think, um, I don't think anything's missing with these fancy machines you have now. Because uh, they were, well, I can't remember what they were looking for. Oh, we were looking for leather. Because Gil makes leather stuff. And he came across this, this one in uh, Quebec. But you could only get them by phone. Give me the phone number. Okay, so I put it in there, and I, <laughs> that was funny, the young man, and he asked me who I was, and I told him who I was, that I was a grandmother, and I was interested in his leather work, and I lived on a reserve. He asked me which one, so I told him, and he must have had a computer, and, uh, but he, he could hardly say the name, eh? it was comical. I says, so you're doing good. He says, why don't you just say you're from Alphabet? Because <laughs> 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 uh, he spelled it. But oh, uh, we sat on that phone and, uh, and he had a new kind of leather. He says, I said, what do, what do you describe? He says, we call it cedar. Oh, and Gail says, I want that. Okay, I said, now tell me, tell me. And he wanted real deer leather, deer hide. And uh, he said, yes, it is. It, he was describing it, so I was saying it. And uh, he was laughing away there, this young man. I can't remember his name. He said, oh, I enjoy this. Don't go get off. He says, what? Well, I want to hear more about what's going on over there. <laughs> and anyway, it came in uh, through the mail. No fancy things came in through the mail. And it's beautiful. It's just beautiful. You can see where uh, uh, there was on the side two bullet holes. But it's a different color altogether. We were looking at it. He said, uh, I got to send this to him. Um, thanking him. And there was no, nothing else in the box. This is from a reserve out there. There was nothing in the box except the hide. No invoice, no nothing. He says, Gil says, well, where is all this? I said, he's Indian. He's not white. <laughs> he don't need that. All he needs, he knows it's paid for. And he says, oh. and he had something. He said, well, I'm looking at this. It's a different color. Good. We'll have to phone him again. That's the only way. But it, it's such a good way. I'm telling you, every one of us and what we can share whether it's, uh, when I think of Diane Longbow, uh, Jewish, 
uh, Italian. Um, I don't know what iron horse is. I can't remember. But different nationalities that sit there. I think he's Mexican. And they have their names. They have what they need. This way of life out there belongs to all of us. Mm -hmm. And you need to know that as a non-native person. And as a native person, we need to honor you with the teachings that we have. Mm -hmm. I don't know anything compared to what, um, what is out there. Mm -hmm. I'm learning too. But oh my gosh, I, I always say I love my life. Because when you get to a place where uh, all of a sudden the puzzle starts coming together, um, it means a whole lot more. And it's not because you're getting old, you're young. You put that puzzle for you together. I can't do that but I can help you with some of the teachings. I don't understand your puzzle, you do, but I can tell you about mine and mine is not complete yet. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's such a thing as, as complete. I really don't, uh, I don't know, but uh, mm, I can't see it. I, I can't see it at all. But how young you young women are, all of you. And you need to tell them that we need, we need to know that now. We can do this now. We don't have to wait till we're older. We have all that information with all your magic machines and and everything else, just put it together for you. Mm -hmm. And if you need somebody to uh, um, listen to you, tell me. I'll listen to you. Um, I think it's a great idea. That's important for parenting. When you, when I say, uh, I'm not saying I know how to be a parent. I'm saying I'm still learning how to be that parent. Mm -hmm. I'm still learning about that magic word, if there's such a thing as self-care. It's natural. You don't need anything fancy. Mm -hmm. It's natural. Stay with natural and all that is there. Because when you start putting labels on everything, um, your puzzles isn't going to come together. Be natural, keep it simple. Because a puzzle is simple no matter whether there's 1,500 or 2,000. Believe me, I know because I put them together, it was fun. And I always look for the border, you know, once they close it in, you can, <laughs> and usually the sky is the hardest or the grass is the hardest to, to put in. Well, no different. What we see, what we do isn't easy, but it can be done if you're willing to look after yourself the way you want to be. Not the way I want you to be, but the way you want to be.
We got about five minutes. Does anyone have any questions or anybody want to no. share? <laughs> <laughs> she said she would listen. You guys got to hold her to that, remember? <laughs> <laughs> Well, for me, so much of what the both of you have shared really resonated. And it's amazing how, you know, when you're doing work on yourself, that people come into your life who bring you the lessons of what, you know, what, what you're working on. And um, so, you know, I have been intentionally learning, up, getting to know myself a little better. And I'm just so appreciative of um, just the uh, reminders that I received today around, you know, well, keeping it simple is just so true, right? And natural. Uh, we don't, you know, it doesn't need to be fancy or expensive, like, you know, um, you know, uh, it's just about, I think, tapping into the, the natural world around us. And um, I loved the idea of the, the 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 rock and the pond and the vibrations right so taking what I took from that was like any sort of single act that you do has these you know ramifications right and so if it's a if it's an act that comes from a good place then the ripple effects are going to be positive right so not only do you give yourself that self-care in that moment if I'm understanding what you were teaching, that there are positive impacts that sort of go out from that. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I understood from what, what you said. So, um, and enjoy in, in yourself. I, I love that. And I'm going to put that on the wall <laughs> mm -hmm. as a reminder. So those are my gratitudes and reflections from what I learned listening to both of you. Thank you. Thank you Anybody we also, else? Yeah. We also had a mom that was taking part in, um, in listening, eh? So um, I know she's she has some struggles too, but I think it's more, you know, knowing that her just listening, you know, I know she was getting a little bit emotional, but it's um, like exactly, you know, looking after ourselves, even though everything that we got going on in our life right now, it some things might not be good, you know, not to say they're bad, but, you know, we can all overcome that because there was a time in my life also being a young mom, I was going through a lot, but I would always go to my aunt, eh? And she was like uh, my role model, my mentor that, and she, you know, even still today, you know, anything, she's one of the first ones that I call, you know, and, but it helps me also because I know where some of our moms are that I work with today. You know, it's taken me like um, 12 years now where um, I come here to Aurelia as a single mom. And I came to Aurelia Native Women's Group and with, my, with my girls. And now I'm here, you know, clean, sober on that on that road, on that living that middle Bamazu in that good life mm -hmm. where I can help the mom say eh, and show them. And that's why I'm always, you know, okay, I have the perfect uh, elder and helper who is more than willing to speak with you. But we also have elders here in our, you know, our knowledge keepers around this area too, eh? Mm -hmm. But um, exactly. So don't try and like, talk about it you know I'm always getting the moms you know anything you ever need anything that's why they all have my number because mm -hmm. you need that eh I don't I don't want them being in that um 
not you know in that place and then they keep it and they hold it in and it's like carrying that backpack with all those rocks eh in it and so yes beautiful i love always listen it always makes me feel so good after i listen to uh beer and chill eh? so miigwech 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 Right. Anybody else have anything you want to say before we say goodbye? Just me, Gretch, Sheila, and Vera. It's so lovely to see you. Um, even if it is in this different medium, it was lovely to see you in person yesterday. It so was. It on. <laughs> and I'm so hear, glad. Yeah. Yeah. And and uh, hear your teachings here and your and your singing. Uh, really, really touching for our community. So, me, to you both. It's lovely to see and and hear your, your thoughts on the world and parenting. I, I really took a lot of it in. So Gucci Miigwech. Miigwech. Do a cedar soak, foot soak with your moms when programming starts. Definitely, you know, give them that self-care and looking after themselves just so they can have that quiet time, put on some drumming, singing, even some quiet music. But they need that, eh? I can't wait till our program start again. That's one of the first things that I'm going to do is pick some cedar and get them in here. After we're going to have Sheila and Vera visiting us, we're going to have a nice welcome back ceremony here. And they can bless our building that we've had going under renovation. So we are excited and waiting for them hopefully next month then. So beautiful yeah. make them a nice um self-care bundle to take home no we're gonna raise their roof come on here <laughs> and that yeah <laughs> never mind this is a time to to uh um just uh, when i when i think when i say raise the roof when this is the time when it opens up and you honor all life especially mm -hmm. your own mm -hmm. and just make sure you have tobacco ties tobacco cedar and lots of songs just let it the songs the shakers make the let them make the noise like um to make up for the past three years exactly last yeah yes beautiful good uh, well, I I want to just offer such gratitude to our our teachers um, Vera and, and Sheila. Thank you for your time and your wisdom, miigwech, miigwech, and uh, thank you to all who have joined in today. Uh, it was really wonderful to be in community, even from a distance, uh, with you. And I hope that you have a lovely and beautiful rest of the day. I hope you can hear me. There is some machinery going on outside, but um, uh, yeah, thank you so much and take the best care and we'll see you again. Mm -hmm. Make that. Come on, man. Come on.